Hello and welcome to Easy Like a Sunday Morn. I'm your host, Shane Lockwood, and this is episode 38. It is the 14th of December 2014, and I'd like to say th- welcome aboard to all those who are listening for the very first time, and a special thank you to those who tune in each and every week. I want to say thank you to those who listen through iTunes and have left a five-star rating. That helps me immensely. Those who are listening to this on YouTube and click thumbs up. And those who are listening to the this show on the iHeartRadio network. If you're listening to this through iHeartRadio, please click, click um, what is it? Click like or not only that, Please add this to your favourites so that you do not miss an episode. It's a weekly show, but you may forget. And I do know that there are some people who don't listen to this show each and every week, but they may catch up later. Um, And some people have stopped listening for whatever reason. And that's partly my fault, uh, not having the show being as interesting as I possibly can. But we're working on that. <clears throat> this show doesn't have any intro or outro music. Uh, I've got to get my computer set back up again for editing purposes. I wanted to do like a whole heap of stuff. For this week's show, I've been promising myself and you guys as well that I was going to do a whole lot of that sort of stuff. But I just have not had the time to be able to do it and still fall within the context of recording and uploading a podcast within the time frame of it being Sunday morning. Somewhere in the world, at least. Um, on to this week's show. I've already wasted two minutes. But if you like the show, let me know. That's basically all there is to it. The uh, basic gist of the show, if you're new... You want to have a pad and pencil, uh, pad, pen, notepad open because I use a code word and the code word it comes at the end of the show to let me know who's been listening the whole way through and you can get that code word to me through multiple um, social media methods that are listed in the show notes un- underneath here in the description box on YouTube, etc, etc, okay? Now, um, on with today's show, there's been a fair bit of things happening. One of the major things that uh, has been of annoyance to most people was the fact that Greenpeace, the uh, organisation that everybody should love because they're focused on preserving the environment, Um, have decided to ruin the Nazca Lions hummingbird with one of their protest messages. And the Peruvian government have decided to sue them, and rightly so, for the irreparable damage to these heritage-listed and protected landmarks. These are the Nazca Lions. If you don't know what the Nazca Lions are... Once again, get your pen and pencil ready, or open a tab up to Google, because we're going to Google. This is an educational podcast. Uh, you will be Googling N-A-Z-C-A space L-I-N-E-S, that's the Nazca Lions, and you just click on images, and it should come up with the hummingbird image and a few other images of, I think, horses, uh, humans, and a few other animals and things like that that can only be seen from the uh, nearby hills or from the air. It was long um, been considered a mystery as to why these things were built and yeah, who built them, etc., etc., I don't think we know the full answer to that, but I do know that eventually we will get it. 
Um, uh, speaking of mysteries, I found out that we know, or historians know, Egyptologists know, why and how we built the pyramids. It's quite fascinating, actually. Fascinating, quite fascinating because apparently the Egyptians left a whole heap of records and diaries and graffiti and all that sort of stuff written on within the pyramids themselves and in around the statues and stuff, the Sphinx and whatnot. So we know the entire history and what was going on in the culture of uh, Egypt at the time. It's quite amazing stuff. So if someone says, oh, we don't know how they built the pyramids, yeah, we do. Um, given that they didn't have the equipment that we have now, uh, it's quite a remarkable feat. Anyway, on moving on, uh, the Cosby sh story, the uh, rape story, uh, has had, I think, at least 15 women coming forward and issuing a complaint. Uh, there's a few people that uh, are jumping in on the bandwagon, so it's hard to tell what's true and what isn't. Uh, I do know that, I think I said last time, that Bill Cosby is countering uh, one of the claims, um, but he hasn't said anything about the others yet, so... Hold on to your hats for that one. Um, I'm a little bit annoyed that um, this year has seen the conviction of, or pretty much the destruction of a lot of my childhood memories. My childhood heroes have become uh, either, they've, they've basically taken a, a fall from grace. You know, the, the father from Hey Dad, uh, Rolf Harris, Bill Cosby, um, Robin Williams committing suicide, Joan Rivers passing away. You know, there's lots, lots and lots of stuff going on there. Um, but we're moving on again. A comedian by the name of Kitty Flanagan got into a bit of strife for going on a TV show called The Project, and she was ending her tenure, shall we say, with the show, and it goes to air live at 6.30pm across Australia, and basically she made a joke, and the joke was that scientists have gone mad because they are studying a fictional Christmas character by the name of Santa, and the joke was that instead of doing that, they should be studying a fictional Christmas character in by the name of Jesus. Now, the funny thing was that the backlash was for her saying, not once but twice, that Santa was fictional rather than her saying Jesus was fictional. You would think there'd be a lot more Christian backlash and outrage, um, but the outrage was just that she was saying that Santa was fictional. And, um, yeah. Now, I don't have any opinions either way with this podcast in regards to Santa. I'm good friends with Santa, and uh, he's always been good to me. So... For me to say he's fictional, I won't go there. It's Otherwise, I won't get anything underneath the tree. As for Jesus being fictional, well, I don't want to uh, go there either. That's too controversial, I think. But it's funny that the, the, the Christians wouldn't stand up and say, Hey, how dare you say that? But yeah, it's funny. Uh, Pirate Bay and Easy... TV.it, uh, these torrenting websites have gone down and are going to stay down. They are offline because the EasyTV.it 
and Pirate Bay are connected okay now what's happened was the creators of Pirate Bay have gone to jail and a couple of months later they the police basically have got the warrants to close to basically search the offices of Pirate Bay and they've turned everything off they've taken all the servers and they're going to go through them and then charge the guys that uh, started it with piracy and, and whatever so be on the guard if you're downloading stuff illegally um, just be very aware that that's what's happening and I think there will be a lot of torrenting sites that will go down as a result of this it's only a matter of time really uh, I made the joke that uh, this will cause um, the death of The Walking Dead and uh, Game of Thrones because it means that fans across the world cannot get access to these shows now while the networks don't make money like that initially because of the piracy they will get it back in terms of people buying DVD box sets and stuff like that uh, whether people lose interest in the show because they can't access it I don't know I really really don't know um, what else is there Disney has found <coughs> and caught now this this uh, segment this part is uh, not for children uh, it heavily relies on adult concepts so please stop this here pause it here this is not for children's ears at all I tried to do this with a live show a live recording but I got in trouble because it brought up a lot of bad bad emotions and I just couldn't continue with the show so what I'm going to do is do a five count and that way you can get your kids out of the, the room um, I want to keep this program on iTunes and things like that and it's not designed to offend anybody but what I'm about to say is rather dark so five four three two one and there's no kids in the room okay um, basically what happened was they had a report that the Disney Corporation found that up, there was up to 35 staff members had been caught uh, with being with say adult material that deals with children the basically the pedophiles and <clears throat> that's largely all I wanted to say about that but the part that gets really bad right I mean there were staff members that were trying to solicit children and all sorts of stuff in Disneyland horrible stuff Disneyland employees downloading stuff like that uh, just ugh, just horrible right but it brings me to the point that stopped me in my tracks when I tried to record this earlier today. Back in September, I unfriended somebody on Facebook. And I didn't tell anybody why. And I saw this guy kick up a stink, drag my name through the mud, um, had people block me all sorts of stuff right but I can reveal here and now a few people have actually blocked him since because of his attitude right but the reason that I unfriended him was because I found out that he'd got a criminal record for downloading child pornography like over 300 like copy videos and stuff um, there was like horror porn and it's just yuck 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 I do not want that person in my life so I unfriended the guy he kicked up a stink he attacked this podcast he attacked my YouTube channel uh, he tried to drag my name through the mud he tried to claim 
uh, responsibility uh, and inspiration for me uh, going to university and graduating and all this sort of stuff, right? He thinks that I owe him something, but the moment you download that material, I owe you nothing, absolutely nothing. And this is where I got upset and it ruined the show. Now this is supposed to be a calm, relaxing show and next week it will go back to that. I needed to get that off my chest. So if you were wondering, if you were part of my friends group on Facebook and you were trying to figure out why I would ever uh, unfriend this individual, it was because of that. And it's not just me saying this against him uh, because of, out of spite or whatever. I will post the news articles in the show notes. So you can look at, look at it for yourself. Now, I know that people are basically lazy. They will not click on links and whatever. Anyway, you, I'll do a five count. Five, four, three, two, one. You can bring your kids back into the room. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. Okay. A few people have asked me why I didn't do a picture-in-picture video for the Star Wars uh, Episode 7 teaser trailer thing, right? There are two reasons why I didn't do that. One is because I need to upgrade my computer to be able to do that. And then I would also need the software to be able to do that. So I need like Sony Vegas or Premiere or one of the programs that will allow me to do that. And the second major reason is because that Disney would have most likely removed the video and flagged it <clears throat> because Legendary Pictures did that when I tried to use a Godzilla thumbnail and I think I've heard stories of the BBC taking down Doctor Who fan videos as well so you do have to be careful when you're using copyrighted material ideally you don't use copyrighted material at all uh, even if it's under fair use, which it would have been. But <clears throat> that's the breaks. The, um, hang on, I'll just pause this. Yeah, um, back again. The, yeah, so we know that there are these companies that are removing videos that have copyrighted material. You don't want to use it where, unless you're a bigger YouTuber. This is where it gets unfair. There's a YouTuber by the name of Emergency Awesome, who is not really a fan of these franchises. He gets paid a lot of money to talk about them, but he gets facts wrong. He was saying that Davros was going to be in Season 8 of Doctor Who, and he wasn't. Uh, he got the voice, the name of the voiceover for the Star Wars teaser trailer wrong. It turned out to be Andy Circus is doing the voiceover for that, so I can reveal that. And oh, what, while I'm on the subject of Star Wars, they have revealed the names of the characters na uh, within the, tr the teaser trailer itself. And also, <clears throat> the round ball droid thing, which goes by the name of BB-8, Mark Hamill has actually revealed that that is not computer generated that is quite literally a physical prop which is quite amazing when you watch the footage again and you see the the droid wobbling and bouncing up and down that's because it's a real prop <coughs> and I think that would be very very difficult to do with CGI it's not impossible it's just you it would be a lot smoother I think um, but yeah, I, the Emergency Awesome was this channel, and he played the entire trailer before talking about it. And now, if I did that, I'd get in big trouble. 
but because he's got over 100,000 subscribers, he can do that. And that's that's YouTube for you. That's It's unfair, but it's when you're competing against the big the big boys, that's what you've got to play with. And what else? Oh, a couple of meme busters today. And the, there's a couple, and it got me into a bit of trouble, a bit of strife, because people want to not... People take sides with this sort of stuff, with these debates, and there's no real debate. It's either scientific or it's not, okay? Now, one of the memes was that it said, and this was a meme from Millions Against Monsanto. Monsanto is a company that produces uh, genetically modified seeds for farmers and stuff like that. They are basically generating, uh, because they produce Roundup, they're looking at, which is a weed killer, an insect killer, a pesticide. They are looking at trying to develop crops that are Roundup resistant, so they don't have to use as much pesticide, right? Anyway, the, the meme was that 37 million bees had been killed uh, as a result of GMO corn, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they don't know what's causing the colony collapse disorder. Nobody knows. But they have strong suspicions. But to come out and say that it's one thing over another is basically dishonest. There are several culprits, things like neonicotinoids, uh, no, neonicotinoids, which is basically like tobacco. as a pesticide that uh, uses like a tobacco but that doesn't that's not the culprit um, by itself the GMOs are harmless and what was the other culprit there's another culprit which is a form of mite that attacks bees but even that will not wipe out a whole colony of bees so they're not really sure bee numbers are not going down they're actually increasing and they're quite strong so double check what you're checking on what you're reading on the internet even some of the science based sites are starting to spout some pseudoscience even though there's bits and pieces that, that have been debunked uh, there's a feminist website called the Mary Sue and a few of my feminist friends are being uh, are, are coming to realise that some of these feminist, feminist sites are not what they appear to be either. So it always pays to double check what you're hearing on the internet and reading and things like that. Double check this show. That's why you've got Google open. Double check me, okay? Nobody's ever bothered to fact check me yet, which is uh, disturbing. Anyway, uh, what was the other one? The other one was that, uh, uh, that said 75% of our air... And our water is made up of Roundup. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd be dead if 75% of my breathing air and drinking water was, was pesticide. Uh, yeah, just, it was just these weird, weird things that people just spread without thinking about it. So, that's just crazy stuff. I want to send a super special shout out to... Susan Lilly, like her, for the last couple of shows I've been talking about Susan Lilly, uh, she's been in the top 20 uh, country music charts for the last seven weeks, I mean that's incredible, really, and her music is absolutely fantastic, you can listen to it over and over and over again, so thank you for her following me on Spreaker and shouting out this show on Twitter. She didn't need to do that. I, I, I'm p fully prepared to advertise her show, but for her to, to, to do mine, that's absolutely incredible. Um, what else? So I've got Meme Busters happening. Got all this other stuff happening. 
Ah, there was today, this is why the show is a little bit late today, The there was the South Aussie Creative Types Breakfast to Afternoon Tea Gathering, which was a rolling event, which means that it started at 9am and ran through till 4pm. But they knew that some people couldn't get there at 9 o'clock, some people wouldn't stay until 4 o'clock, so it's a rolling event. So people would just come in at any time and we'd meet all these fantastic people. I got to meet like people that I already knew, like Michael Ditkowitz, who is an absolutely fantastic art- artist and you want to look him up it's m-i-c-h-a-l and dutkowitz <coughs> i'm not going to spell that uh d-u-t-k-e-w-i-t-z no i've got it wrong i i don't have the spelling with me check it in the uh, description thing down below like i said you've it helps to to uh fact check me um, I didn't fact check that before I started recording. And what else? Who else? Annie Fox. Annie Fox wrote um, several TV shows that were playing in the afternoon for children. My f- absolutely favourite when I was in high school, coming home after school, was one called Ocean Girl. And I had a bit of a crush on the on the actress that played Ocean Girl, uh, Thunderstone, and she just rambled off a whole heap of these things, and I just went, "Oh my goodness!" This woman basically contributed a massive chunk to my childhood. How amazing is that? That's absolutely fantastic, fantastic stuff, <laughs> and. I think that's pretty much it for this week. I'm 27 minutes in, and I want to say thank you for those who are, have been listening for this long. I had a, a code word earlier in the day, but I realized because I did a live show. I was walking to the train station and did a live show, and um, yeah. I saw a Cessna fly over and I thought that would be a great code word but the problem is that I've used it before I think actually no I don't think I have but I'm not going to use it this week this week the actually 20 28 minutes so this week the code word is for those who are listening the code word is Grand, G R A N D, Grand, and if you leave that in the comments or email it to me on uh, Shane underscore Lockwood at hotmail dot com, or tweet me on Twitter. That's S H A I D O on Twitter, and let me know the code word, and that lets me know that you've been listening to the show the whole way through. And this is a lot better than last week's, I think, the show. I've got had a little bit more notes and things to, to, to uh, take. But, uh, yeah. And uh, if you want to find out who the person was that I unfriended and talked about unfriended earlier uh, in the show, just get in contact with me on social media. Don't unfriend him straight away because it looks like I'm being vindictive against him and all this sort of stuff. But read the articles read the articles and you'll find out more i've got the contact details there for you what else is there all you need to do is click like leave the uh code word and oh 30 seconds to go i hope that today the rest of today and the rest of the week is easy like a sunday morning and that's it. I hope you have had a great show. It's gone straight through. It's flown really quick. And um, that's all from me this week. See you again 
next week. Bye for now.